What's up guys, it's Connor here, and uh, got that stupid PM9 Moab, guys, I finally got it for some reason, this gave me tons of trouble, finally got it, pretty excited about that, I got this a couple weeks ago, and you might have realized that I did not put out a, it is written yes, or last week, and that's because guys, I've got some big news for you on Tuesday, so I should have the video out Tuesday, that'll give you the big news, and for, and what I'm going to end up doing is I can't tell you right now, because it's a secret, Shh. and what else we've got? I'm going to do another series, and this series is going to be sweet. It's not going to be, it'll be, it is written, it's too hard to, to think of subjects each week. I have a feeling that this might get more difficult every week to find new subjects to talk about. I will continue doing it, of course, but I've got another, um, another series coming out. I don't think this series will start next week, but in about three weeks it'll start. And I'll switch on and off. Every other week it'll be that one, and then the weeks that it's not the new series, it'll be It Is Written. You guys are going to love this series. I'm, I'm almost positive of it. This series will be great. And so we got to get into this because this is a pretty important topic today. They all are, but this one, this one affects a lot of people. It's about anger. Anger is an automatic response to ill treatment. It is the way a person indicates he or she will not tolerate certain types of behavior. It's a feedback mechanism when something that you don't like is met with a response that they're not going to like. It's just that, oh man, it's a rage. It's that rage you get, that madness that builds up inside of you when someone cuts you off on the highway. The one where you would just want to drive by next to them and flip off the flip the bird at them. Or where you just want to like get really long arms and punch them through the window. One of those, it's, it's one of those feelings. And it becomes, anger becomes a predominant feeling behaviorally and cognitively when a person makes a conscious choice to take action to immediately stop the threatening behavior of another force. So it's that it controls your thinking and it controls what you do um, outwardly, what, how you behave, how you react to it. it. It basically takes you over. It's that surge of motion that, or emotion that builds up like a volcano. It's threatening to erupt inside you. And the, it gets bad when you let it erupt. When you start to let it erupt, it is not good. And the thing about anger is it normally lasts a short time. For most, for a majority of things, anger will last a very short time. And all you need to do is you need to walk away from the situation for five or ten minutes. You need to think about it. You need to breathe. You need to give yourself a couple minutes because this anger can last a short time, but it'll ruin you for the, it can ruin you for the rest of your life. I've got some stories about this. It's almost like getting drunk in a way. It, it impairs your judgment. It impairs it in a different way, but definitely impairs your judgment. When you're mad, you're not thinking about anything except what you want to do to that guy. Oh, I want to hit him. Oh, my gosh. I want to. I just want to shoot him right now. And you just got to give yourself that second to think about it. Is this worth it? Is it worth it for me to go over there and hit this guy and get suspended from school or even get in trouble with the law? Is it worth it? You need to go back think about that. And you might at that time, you're like, heck, yeah, it's worth it. I hate this guy. He's annoying me. You can't, you got to go give yourself that second to be, to go think this over. You got to think it over because it's building up inside of you. And if you let it erupt, it's bad, but you can just let it kind of, kind of boil back down. And you can start with, it might, there's different ways to take out your anger, I should say. It might start with hitting a pillow. You might be, you might be hitting a wall. I mean, this is, these are both hitting a pillow. It can sometimes lead up to hitting a wall. Not always. Sometimes you'll just stick with hitting the pillow. You might only hit a pillow, hit a couch. I know I've done that a couple of times. I've never really hit a wall because I'm scared to hurt myself. <laughs> um, but you could hit a wall. And now the thing with hitting the wall, though, is if there's a wall there and you hit it, what if there's a person there? If there's a person there, you would probably hit the person just as much as you'd hit that wall. And it can even end up killing people. Anger is one of the top killers, the top reason, motives behind killing someone. Besides gang violence, um, it, anger is the number one problem of why people get killed. And it's just because that for that moment, you're just mad. Right there in that moment in time, you're super mad. You're not thinking about anything. You've got that gun in your pocket, and you just pulled out, whip it out, and boom, dead. It's over, and then all of a sudden, your life's done. You're over. Your life is basically over now. And now you're like, was it worth it? Was it worth it to hit that guy and get expelled or even kill this guy? If that is never worth it. I'm telling you that. And I've got a couple examples of this. Or first, let me tell you. Let me tell you what um, God has to say about anger. He says, "Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It only leads to evil." That's Psalm thirty-seven, eight. Proverbs fifteen, eighteen. A hot-tempered man or an angry man stirs up dissension or like arguing and fighting, but a patient man calms a quarrel. Quarrel. The only thing that anger does is lead to evil, as it says, and it causes quarrels, causes arguments. 
Now, um, and that's anger. It, it, nothing good can come out of being angry, really. And it can just lead to arguments, fights, killing. And I've got some examples of this. I have an older stepbrother, Chris. His name's Chris. He's, um, he was back when he was about 20s in his 20-something. He would, he was, he's still an angry guy, but he was bad here. He was angry, and he ended up going to jail twice for getting in fights. And he's obviously, we're nothing alike. He's, he's not a Christian. He's not really living a great lifestyle, but he ended up getting, he got really mad in twice at bars. There was alcohol involved, which obviously alcohol is not good for anger. It's not really good for anything. Alcohol and anger not leading to good stuff. He got into two fights. Both fights end up landing him in the law or in the, in the jail for a couple of months. And now was it worth it to him? No, of course it wasn't worth it. It's not worth going to jail for a couple months just because you're mad at a guy and you want to hit him right then. Never worth it. That's off that's not gonna be worth and living in jail six months for something that brought you satisfaction for one minute. And so it's just there's also here's another story. There's this basketball player from Indianapolis, which isn't too far from where I live. And he was a great basketball player, one of the best basketball players back in the day. This was quite a while ago. And what ended up happening is a group of guys from Ball State basketball team were going down to play the Pendleton Heights um, Pendleton Heights basketball team. And these guys hadn't seen this. They knew this kid in high school, but they hadn't seen him since for like two or three years or something. They're down there. They got done at the game. They're like, oh, hey, we remember you. You were a great basketball player from whatever high school. I can't remember what it's called right off the top of my head. And he's like, yeah, they're like, dude, what are you doing in here? You had a great career going. He says, I got mad and shot somebody. I don't know if the guy died. I, I didn't hear this, but he shot somebody. He said he just ruined his entire life, his entire basketball career he had going for him. He ruined it because he got mad in that one moment, and he shot that guy. He shot that guy, and they end up putting him in jail for a long, long time, if not forever. Now, here's one of the best examples, best stories I've ever heard. This is a great, great moral to this story. And the next time you're tempted to say something hurtful to someone or to, or to hurt someone just because you're angry, remember this story. There once was a little boy who had a bad temper. His father gave him a bag of nails and told him every time he lost his temper, he must go hammer a nail into the back of the fence. There's a into the back of the fence in the backyard. The first day, the boy drove 37 nails into the fence. Over the next few weeks, he learned to control his anger. The number of nails hammered daily gradually dwindled down. He discovered it was easier to hold in his temper, to, or to hold not hold it in, but to hold his temper, than to drive those nails into the fence. Finally, the day came when the boy didn't lose his temper at all. He told his father about it, and the father suggested that the boy now pull out one nail for each day that he was able to hold his temper. The days passed and the younger boy was finally able to tell his father that all the nails were gone. The father took his son by the hand and now led him to the fence. He said, you have done well my son, but look at the holes in the fence. The fence will never be the same. When you say things in anger, they leave a scar just like this one. You can put a knife in a man and draw it out. It won't matter how many times you say I'm sorry, the wound is still there. The little boy then understood how powerful his words were, his words and actions were. He looked up at his father and said, I hope you can forgive me for the holes I put in you. His father said, of course I can. This is a great story. So this kid had to hammer nails into a fence every time he got angry. He eventually learned, he's like, uh, it's easier just to not get mad and just control my anger than to go out there and nail every a nail, a nail in the fence every time I got mad. So then what he does is he gets over his anger and his dad goes, now every day you're not angry and you hold it in, just pull it, now not hold it in, but you control it, pull out the nails. And so the boy finally got all the nails out and his dad, now, now look at the fence. There's holes all over the fence. These are all wounds that you cannot heal. You can't heal these wounds. They're in there forever. These scars will never go away. You can stab someone, you can hit someone, break their nose, you can shoot someone kill him injure him it doesn't matter that will never go away that that he could be dead he'll never come back alive that bullet wound that'll never go away the time you spent in jail will never go away these scars that you create in those split seconds that you're angry they will last with you for a lifetime they will last with you forever and they will never heal just stay away from the anger that builds up inside you stand back a second and be like whoa this is not worth it this is not worth what I'm going through. Uh, this one second of anger is not worth me getting in trouble forever. It's a great story, guys. So definitely remember that. 
And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Sorry that the video is over and it took a I went a little over the video length, but I thought that was a great story. So I'll see you guys when I see you. Adios.